So we're going to model this uh, chandelier that I designed. Uh, and that's going to be for my wine cellar scene. But I mean, you could use it for anything if you're interested in this. It's not going to be overly low poly. It's probably going to come out to be around 70,000. But it's just something that I, I wanted to, to design and have in there. Uh, there's certainly more fancier chandeliers than this and more simplistic ones. But anyways, so uh, you can download the reference image if you're interested in modeling long. It's going to be straightforward modeling. There's no, there's no real trick or anything in most of the stuff that I do. Um, I, so I just brought in the reference image and I pressed S2 or S3, I think, to scale it and moved it back on the Y. So I've got it here. I'm looking in front view and I've just moved it so that my 3D cursor is pretty much down there in the middle. So we're going to use this and sort of these as references. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and uh, I'm going to create a circle now. Probably will be putting subdivisions on, so maybe I'll go for something like 24 rather than 32 or whatever. I'm going to scale it up till it looks like it's roughly the same size. Bring it up to here or so and extrude it down. So we got that, right? All right, so now we're just going to give this thing some thickness like this. So uh, I'm going to press E and Alt S and I'm going to push. No, I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull it in just like this. I don't want it too thick or anything. So something like that. And uh, we're going to do this line. So I'm going to go into wireframe and Control R. I'll drop an edge loop there. I don't know why it's not in the center. It's a little higher up. So I'm just going to drop two edge loops like that. Okay, I'm going to Alt A to deselect, three for face selection, and Shift Alt and click to select them all. I'm going to press E and Alt S, and I'm going to not push, that'll bring it in, pull out a little bit like that. And then I'm going to Control R, put another one there, and I'm going to Alt S and pull it out like that. With that one still selected, I'm going to Control B and split it with three edges. And I will bevel these ones as well. That's probably overkill on how much I need because of the subdivision, so I'll do that. And I think I will probably need an edge loop for support down here and one up and or up there and down there. And then uh, shift alt and click these edges and we'll bevel them as well. And that'll pretty much be it for this. That's just three, three edges. I'll shade smooth and control one. And that's what I will get. And already, that's a lot of polys, but uh, yeah, it's all right, I guess. Okay, so we're going to move over to this stuff here. Okay, select a circle from here. Shift D to duplicate it. Pull it over, S to scale. And I'm just going to G to grab, and we're going to create this thing on the side. S to scale it till you get the size that you like. Like about that, but I'm going to break it out. P, break it out so it's its own object. Okay, so now I'm going to E to extrude, pull down to here. And this one has a subdivision on. I'm going to turn it off for now. E, pull down to here, and S to scale. In like this. E to extrude and pull down to the end, S to scale. And get yourself a thing that looks like that. All right, uh, I'm going to F to fill that and control B and pull and just round it out. I can add another segment or two if I want. We can do some beveling, shift alt to click there, control B. I just need three. We'll bevel this, control B. I'll make it a bit of a bigger bevel. And three is probably still fine. And then I'm gonna come up here and in edge selection, shift alt and click. To give this some thickness, I'm just gonna press E and S and come in a bit and then E and come down. You're never gonna see in there unless you're on top of the chandelier and why would you be there? All right, but let's bevel these with three, just like that. Shade smooth and let's try turning on the subdivision. And we have that. I'm gonna turn off the shadow because I thought that was something weird there. Okay, so we've got that. Now, I realize I made a bit of a mistake because I want to extrude out a little lip there. It probably wasn't a good idea to bevel this yet. So I'm going to back up. I'm going to dissolve that edge. And I think I'm going to dissolve maybe this edge here. So I just have that. Now I'll come in and I'll just throw in an edge loop 
and how high I want it. You know, does it really matter? You know, I want to exaggerate it a little bit. Turn that off. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it there, back in a solid view. So now, three for face selection, shift alt to click there, E and alt S and pull, and just have it come out a little ways. Now I'm going to reassess what I've got here. I don't need that. Dissolve edges does no good. I'm going to bevel these edges. Shift alt to click, control B with three. I will need another edge under here. Watch the shading, see how it changes as I pull that up. And I think everything else is okay. We can put that back on. And that's just, you know, gives it a little bit more design. Okay, so we're going to build one full unit and then we're going to rotate it around. So the next thing I'm going to do is this thing with holes. Now, if you were doing this for a game, I don't think you would ever do this in geometry. We, of course, have been doing this kind of stuff for years in Blender and complaining about the number of polys that we end up blowing. But you could certainly do this in Substance Designer or in Substance Painter with opacity or transparency. But I am going to do it in geometry. And so I'm going to uh, bring my 3D cursor here. It's a little easier to do this. And I'm going to bring, this is how I'm going to do it. There's different ways to do this. I'm going to scale this down till it's the approximate size. Rotate X 90. And I can look at wireframe. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. So, something like that is, is going to be fine. And I'm going to drop an edge dip there and there and select it all. Right click, subdivide. And so it's done it another, a number, another time. I'm going to do it, I think, just one more time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to select this center vertex there, control plus, and then X vertices and now I just have a big hole right here and I can uh, go back into solid view okay I'm going to shift alt and click that edge going around E and S and come in I just want another supporting edge there and I'm going to convert that to a circle using loop tools and I'll scale it in a bit and then I'm going to press E and S scale it in one more time now I'm going to take the whole thing and scale it down until it's kind of the same size as one of these holes something like that now I'm going to bring my 3d cursor there okay I'm going to now use the array I'm in the X I'm going to click on merge and I'm probably going to use about 12 copies of this all right so I've got it arrayed 12 times like that and I've got my hole there all right I'm going to add another modifier, which is a simple deform. I'm going to switch to the Z and bend. And I want to bend 360 degrees. And it's pretty close to the size that we need. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. And I'm going to apply the modifiers. Now come in, select it all, press M, merge by distance. And we will have gotten rid of some vertices like that. Okay, so next, I'm going to select it all, Shift D to duplicate it, pull it up, and I want the next row of circles to be, or holes, to be offset. So I've got snap to vertex on, I press one anyhow, and I'm just going to rotate this one in the Z until this hole is halfway between. So I'm going to R, Z, and pull, you can go either way, and this middle line here, I'll stop about there and then I can adjust it. This middle line is in the middle here. And so that's pretty good. So I'm going to press GZ and bring it closer. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to take the whole thing, GZ, hover my mouse over here and hope that it's snapped. I'll select everything, merge by distance. And I don't think they quite snapped yet. So I'm going to, let's see, uh, control I'll select this. And I'm going to rotate in the Z. And I'm just going to like try to bring it closer. Uh, let's see if I can get it closer. As close as possible. Try that. Merge by distance. Ah, got rid of a bunch of vertices. So they're snapped together now. And everything should be fine. If I shade smooth, I shouldn't see a line or anything. 
All right. Let me go back to flat though. All right, so now what I need to do is just do that again. Shift D to duplicate, pull it up, bring it down, hold control to snap, select it all, merge by distance. We got rid of another 72, so I think we're good. So now I'm going to pull this down to about there and just hope that it doesn't poke through and doesn't look like it is. It's not centered though. So I'm going to select this again and shift S cursor to cursor to selected. So this is my 3D cursor is centered around this thing and take this and go to object set origin to 3D cursor and set geometry to origin. And now I just have to pull it up the right distance. All right, cool. And now we're going to give this some thickness and you can use solidify or I think I'm just going to go E and alt S and pull, pull it in like that. Okay, double check that it's still good. And I think I'll come in here and I'll bevel the top, shift alt and click there and there. And control B, I just want three. And I might as well get rid of the bottom slash key, come under here and just get rid of all these polys X faces. So I've got my whole thing and it looks roughly like the other one. All right, time to make a candle. So let's do this. Uh, should I use any of this? It's got a subdivision on it. All right, let's just bring in another cylinder. Bring in a cylinder. Um, I think I'm going to use like 22. And uh, I will just do end gone. Scale it down. And maybe we can follow this a little bit. Something like that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's going to be okay. Uh, let's just focus on that and get rid of the bottom. We don't need that. And for the top, how about we do this? I'd inset, pull it in a little ways, pull it down. No, not yet. Uh, extrude it down and scale it. And then maybe I'd inset one more time and then just extrude down and scale. Do something like that. And then select here, we'll bevel this. We'll bevel this edge, it's a bit smoother. We'll bevel this. I mean, it doesn't look all that re realistic as a candle. And you can pull down a side if you want. I'm not going to bother. Uh, I'm just going to do that. I'm probably not even going to see that anyhow. But I will pull it up. So go into wireframe and box select and just pull it up to about that level. Just so that you can see something through it. And the way that I did the wick, I did it in geometry. And, and uh, I will show you some of my lighting and all uh, later. So the way I'm going to do this is uh, using a UV sphere. 10 and 10 is fine for this and scale it down. And uh, we're going to wireframe, just get it the approximate size, mostly at the base area here. And then come in and grab this top vertex, which I don't have. <laughs> there it is. All right. And I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to put on proportional editing and I use using sphere here pull it up and just roll your mouse up to get the size of the circle of influence that you want. Do something like that. Turn that off and let's have a look at this. All right, and then maybe scale it in the Y a little bit and shade smooth. And if you really want, you can put on a subdivision and it looks nicer, but I don't know that you'd ever need it because you can be so far away. And you can keep, you know, fiddling with this to get the, you know, this the shape that you want. If you want it sharper or whatever. So maybe, yeah, I don't know, something like that. And I didn't do a wick, so just just that now. That's not even gonna be necessary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the flame and the candle and I'm gonna join them. And you can put materials on later. I'm just checking modifiers. I don't have anything, so I'm going to join that. And this thing has a subdivision of one, and I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And so I'm going to take this stuff and that, and I'm going to control J to join that. All right, next thing is just something to hold this. I've got my 3D cursor right there. So let's bring in another cylinder. This time we'll use 16. You can probably get by with less. Let's put nothing there. Scale it down. Let's turn that off. Let's rotate Y90, slide it over, scale it. We can look from here and just keep scaling it till you got something that fits. I'm gonna have to come under that lip and just pull it in a little bit. 
let's see how that works and shade smooth you know something like that can hold and that's fine where it is doesn't matter if it overlaps this so i'm going to take that and then i'm going to control j just come in once in a while and just merge by distance alt n recalculate outside see if there's anything going on all right so let's take these babies and bring them around so i'm going to select this bring my 3d cursor there i'm going to look from the top and i'm going to switch to 3d cursor shift d and i'm going to rotate 180 degrees take both of these i can join them now shift d rotate 90. so they are around there so far so good let's do this little design uh this little thing here is to is to hold sort of the spoke that holds the center piece there so i'll just do something so i'm just going to bring in a cube scale it down it's easiest to work on one of these uh I want to say orthographic sides, right, you know, parts of the compass, then come right to uh, an angled one, if that made sense. Go back to median point, get this around halfway, scale in the X, and just do something like this, and just look at it. Okay, so it's kind of like right in the middle, something like that, actually. Okay, so just decide how wide you want this thing, scale in the Y, let's do a, a rectangle like that. I'm going to just focus on that thing control three to look from the side and let's uh bevel that okay so the two tops the two bottoms control b three is okay i used to use five all the time and i'm kind of missing it but we'll go with that so we'd have that and then i want to put a design on here so i'm going to bring my 3d cursor there and bring in another plane scale it down rotate y90 and for this one i'm going to just uh i'm going to extrude out a little bit and then i extrude out again and scale down like that not to a full point it doesn't have to be that much actually something like that i'll go with that and um let's take this out and get rid of this back face because we're not going to need that we can take the whole thing and push it on but we're going to bevel two for edge selection shift alt and click the edge so it goes down all the way that one and that one control b pull with three this pull not too much so that the edges don't overlap and that edge there just something like that so they're joined they're not joined there now we get shade smooth we'll deal with shading in a bit slash key so it's stuck in there so i think that's all we need to do for that piece unless you don't want it sticking out quite that far it's up to you you can control plus a few times and pull it in a bit it doesn't really matter all right let's bring the 3d cursor back to here so shift s cursor to selected grab that look from the top and switch to there i'm going to rotate 45 first of all so it's there shift d rotate 180 so it's there I'm going to join those and then I'm going to shift D rotate 90 and I'm going to join all of those control J so I have that and I actually may move them down a little bit just center them up a bit so we got that whether or not you like that I don't know you put other designs on this in substance painter we may do that and for the middle stuff I actually kind of would have recommended you don't go don't go nuts on that in fact i can't even see it to model it very well so um i don't know i just something simple uh 22 vertices is fine so let's see what we're going to do let's bring that up and scale it and go back to median point i'll, I'll roughly follow this uh, but it, there's no need to do anything too crazy unless you want to um, I'm not in object mode. I mean, not in edge, edge, edit mode. E to extrude up to here. E up to. I don't even really know where it goes, so I'm just going to bring it up and do something here like this. And uh, I think what I did was uh, I think I just I think I just bring it up at that point. F fill it, bevel it back. Uh, bevel this one put an edge loop somewhere and we'll 
dig down in control B just with two E and alt S and pull or push push it looks like to bring that in bring an edge loop down we will be putting a subdivision on this so I'm going to do control one for now just so we start to get a sense of this thing so we got that going on and I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to bring this down and for the bottom let's see if I can see anything here okay no not really just do anything okay so for the bottom I'm going to extrude down I'm going to scale in and I'm going to do almost a very similar thing. Oops, I moved it. E, come down, and uh, I'm going to fill that. All right, F, and bevel. I need three, and I'm going to slide an edge loop down. You probably won't see much here anyhow. Uh, and that's going to be my centerpiece. Okay, although I don't particularly like that, so I'm going to take this and control plus a couple times, uh, and I'm going to scale shift Z and, and do it more like that. And that gives me this little area here, which means I think it's calling for one of these indents. I still don't like this. I don't like the way it's angled. I'm going to see if I can grab this and scale it out. Let's do the spoke like connections now. And I will do that by just bringing in a plane. I'll bring it up roughly to where it goes and I will merge at center. And then I'm going to pull that one vertex out and say, okay, roughly I would want it attaching in the middle. I'm going to look from the front and I'm going to press E and G and I'm going to pull it down. I can go into wireframe so I see where it goes and imagine it goes roughly into the middle of this thing, even though it's going straight out that way. Okay, so take that and you can pull it in if you need to. And I'm just going to convert this to a curve and give it some thickness here under geometry bevel. Just hold shift and pull. And decide how wide you want your spoke something like that it's fine shade smooth and uh, if when you're happy with it then and I think I am I'm just gonna rotate 45 so I got one in there and it's easier if you do that it doesn't really matter shifty rotate 180 I can join those shifty rotate 90 and again join them it's easier then when I convert these to a mesh uh, do it all the same and that that's fine with me so I'm gonna come up here change the resolution to 3 and convert to a mesh so they're ready to be joined uh, very soon and this thing mm-hmm I almost would, would prefer a simple cylinder but we shall continue so we're going to make the chain part on the top. So just do any design that you think looks good. I don't know. This is starting to look sort of like, you know, old fashioned or whatever, and also sci-fi. So I don't know if it works. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, I'm going to come in like that with a plane and I'm going to uh, shift control B to bevel. I'm going to pull and I want to circle. So I'm going to press C to clamp so that when they hit, see, they don't overlap. See if I to undo that they always are overlapping C to clamp so go as far as you can and then start rolling up your mouse until you get a circle that you're happy with that's fine with me select it and not that X only faces don't choose faces only faces that'll still leave you with the edge all right and then I'm going to convert that to a curve this is a quick way of making a circle and I'm going to increase this and I suppose I didn't even really see the size of this I wasn't concentrating so I'm going to scale that down, go into wireframe, and it, it is getting a little hard to see. I'm doing this thing here. So I'll just adjust this a little bit. And let's rotate X90 and kind of roughly position that. And it, let's see. Just do, I suppose, what, what you think looks good as a, as, a, as a hook type thing. That's probably okay for what I want to do. And so I'm going to convert that to a mesh, but not yet. I'm going to come up here, change the resolution to three again, and then uh, look from the front and convert it to a mesh. 
and then go into edit mode and wireframe and box select anything that's going to be hidden uh, you do a nicer job than that something like that x vertices all right and shade smooth and i cut off a little bit too much so i'm going to back up and uh actually i'm going to do x faces there we go shade smooth okay so we have that there as a hook i kind of want to just do this this is a little bit wide for me okay and to make the chain lots of different ways to do that but the way i'm going to do it is a very simple way plain again bring it up and roughly match turn that back roughly match the width of that rotate x 90 and roughly match the height of that as well something like that all right i'm going to shift control b again i'm going to pull and i don't need too many vertices probably a total of five and i'm just sort of creating a rounded rectangle something like that select it all x only faces again scale it if you want convert it to a curve and do this you can still scale it a little bit if you need to that kind of a thing i'm going to pull this down and i'm going to rotate z 90 and we may be off the diagram at this point a little bit i can still change the width shift d to duplicate pull it up rotate z 90 and yeah i'm off the diagram so i'm not going to worry about that in fact before i do that one i want to take this one scale it in the y a little bit all right that's going to be my general shape i want to make that a mesh right now not four i'll go for three I'm going to make it a mesh right now and I'm going to come in and I'm going to shift alt and click this edge and scale SZ0 so straighten it out in the Z SZ0 because I'm going to take this three for face selection shift alt and click there and go E and alt S and push and do that on it and then it'll be copied to all other links select that edge control B to bevel just with three but I'm going to need an edge loop right there for when I shade smooth and right there. So I will go, go ahead and shade smooth. And that's my chain link. Oh, it's not too thick. It is a bit thick. So, you know, trial and error. Okay, shifty up, rotate Z90. And it may go off a little bit because of how we change the uh, shape of it. Just get it to fit just like that and then shift D to duplicate and do a couple of those all right yeah that is a hefty chain there but I mean you could take the whole thing and just scale it down like this and just had you know have a different number of chain links you know however many you need and then at the top just take this piece again I'm not following the diagram anymore just take that and that's uh, rotate X uh, 180, is it? Bring that in and then, you know, if this is the wrong link, you know, add another one of these if you need. Control L, Shift D, pull it up. So it goes like that and then take this. And let's see, just this one. Pull that up and if it's not centered or whatever, just do that kind of thing. And then just make yourself a rectangle at the top. Okay, so I won't bother with that. Now this stuff is a mesh. Uh, this is a mesh, so I can join those. Those are a mesh. This, what do we got on here? I'm gonna apply that subdivision and I'm going to join those and I'm gonna join all that stuff together. This has the subdivision on it, so I'll apply it, and join, and join that stuff too. I'm gonna to get rid of that. Now, do I have everything? No, that's not joined yet. And okay, these guys aren't joined yet. The only thing is, uh, if your flame is flattened, you may have one going this way and one going that way. You may have to rotate your flame a little bit, like come in here, rotate in the Z, and just, you know, 
or do them differently, whatever. Let's have a look at the damage. All right, 84,000. Now, is there anything in here to merge by distance? If I had done it this way, I would be coming in here, though, 84,000. I'd be going, okay, I'm getting rid of those. There's really no need to have it this uh, high poly. Uh, I'd be getting rid of these. Uh, I would be fixing up this. This is just a personal thing, though. Uh, X faces, and I could take this and loop to a circle and F to make face. Okay, I'll be doing that. And underneath here, so I'm sorry, I'm just cleaning up. I still wanted the roundness from that. In fact, maybe I'll get rid of those and just F to make face. Uh, we're not down that much yet. You know, but here, you know, there's no reason to have in this straight wall this many uh, po uh, poly uh, edges. So I'm just, you know, take some time and I'm going to go around and get rid of what I don't need. And, and a lot of times stuff doesn't need to be as round as I think it might. So I'm just getting rid of stuff and dissolving edges. You know, I'm, I'm not going to bother on that. But, and I, I don't want to go through all of these, but... I could easily get rid of uh, that, nah, maybe not that last one, and it barely changes anything. Well, maybe it does a little bit, so. But you know, okay, well, well, these, um, you know, definitely no need for that. All the way down here. So now we're at 81,000. I would do that on all of them. Um, Yeah, there's going to be other places uh, as well. Again, this takes up a lot of geometry right here. So um, I won't do all of this uh, with you. You don't need to see all this. But I think the take-home message is just use subdivision surface sparingly and uh, willingly uh, if you care about uh, the polys. And, and I don't always, uh, in fact, I often don't, I don't ha always have a reason to, but if you have a reason to, then you need to know what you're doing. You'd be better at it than I would be anyhow at that point. Uh, now, you know, we're under 80 now. There's no way that this would need that much. But I just, you know, I wanted it kind of smooth. And, um, you know, if I get rid of that, does it, it doesn't really appreciably change the shape of, of, of this or the, the concept of it. So yeah whatever you can build it as carefully as you want using you know the the methods that you know that are good modeling methods and i sometimes just do, do stuff quick to show you how to do it and then from there you just do your thing let's see i'll just end with this and uh, we'll see what we got it down to not enough but doesn't really matter there's definitely other places I can get rid of some so we're down to 77 so I got rid of about what was it 83 before about 5,000 almost 6,000 you know and then it's, uh, yeah okay well uh, the chains you know are quite heavy as well you know like this many edges on here just to do that. I usually want to have two or three. You know, I might want to scale that out, uh, depending on what you want. But uh, now I said I wasn't going to take too much of your time. Let me see that. Uh, no, I guess I need that one. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. That's it for now. So uh, I'll just show you an image of how this would potentially look in the scene with the lighting. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you about that. Yeah, so this would be a very similar chandelier right here. All right, with the, with the flames, with just an emission. And I do have a volume up here that we'll talk about. 
eventually. And don't mind any of this stuff. I'm not certain about that. But that's basically the chandelier. And that's with blender materials. So hopefully it'll look even better once I put the nice metal uh, on here from Substance Painter. So that's what we're going for anyhow. So hopefully you'll join me in the next video and for the rest of the series. All right, take care.